Uh, we are doing, uh, we are just presenting a case in which uh, I will demonstrate uh, how can you repair a bucket handle tear. Now, uh, basically meniscus repair is very important. We all know that if you don't repair the meniscus, then there is very high chances of developing a osteoarthritis. And we all know that inside out is still the gold standard of the meniscus repair as far as the lock knee in the meniscus is concerned. So there are many techniques which are advanced now. We have all inside devices, we have outside in devices available inside out. But still inside out is considered to be gold standard because with the inside out we can put multiple number of stitches at the desired location. So this is one of such cases in which the patient has got a locked bucket handle tear. You can see that the femur is on the top and tibia is on the bottom. And you have a tear which is there and this is sort of a locked tear and sometimes it is a double locking also. So you have you have two levels of tear. So one, is, one tear is here and one tear is on the back side. So what we want here is we want, we want to repair this zone as well and we want to repair the posterior zone as well. So this is called as a double bucket handle pattern. So you have two patterns of uh, two level of tear, one here and one at the back. So two levels of tears are there. So one layer, layer is there and the other layer is there. Sorry. This is called as a double bucket handle configuration. The most important thing here is to do a very good pie crusting. The pie crusting is done at the magic point, which is approximately on the femoral side at the posterior part of the junction. So you uh, join the epicondyle between the femur and the epicondyle of the tibia, and just on the midpoint, just posterior and towards the femoral side, there will be a magic point, and when you do a pie crusting there you will be appreciating the opening up of the space which will be very useful for you to see the meniscus. Normally in these kind of double meniscus, double bucket handle tear, we will recommend doing a flip of your scope. So pr probably, uh, preferably the scope will be shifted to the medial portal and your lateral portal will be serving as a working portal. And I would recommend a zone specific repair system. Zone specific repair system will usually uh, make your needle exit at one particular level, one particular point. So it has got 0 degree, 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree, different different angles of the cannula. And ideally, before doing this step, you should approach it on the posterior middle aspect of the knee, expose the knee on the posterior middle aspect of the knee, expose the muscles, expose the tendons, and you should go up to the level of the capsule. I will not recommend a more, a very thorough debridement here, but you can do a little bit of debridement. And now you are using your zone specific meniscus repair system, the inside out meniscus repair system to repair the meniscus. So this is the first pipe. Normally I start posterior and go anterior. So we start from the posterior and then we go on on the anterior aspect of the knee. So, and we start with the posterior and we go with the more, more angles, so 40 degree angle initially and then you can go 30 degree, 20 degree, 10 degree angles and these are the curved cannulas which will be used. We use a disposable inside out needle system, so these are two needles which are connected with 2-0 fiber wire kind of a suture and this can be repaired one by one. Now, in this kind of repair, you should not shy upon using number of sutures because one it is not very very expensive system and the number of sutures that you put will will determine the strength of the repair that you are doing. So you can see that we are putting number of anchors, number of sutures. Now ideally you should do a upper level, lower level repair and the ratio should be 2 is to 1. So 2 on the top flap and 1 on the bottom flap. So 2 is to 1 ratio. 2 on the top, 1 on the bottom. Okay. So 1 on the top, 1 on the bottom and 2 on the top. So that way if you are putting around 6 sutures on the top flap, you put around 3 sutures on the lower flap. So this way we are putting sutures one by one. So this way you, you are. Now this system is pretty safe system. If you are doing your exposure nicely and if you are following all the steps that I have told you, there are very less chances of any neurological neurovascular damage. 
the only structure I can see is the septenous nerve. For that, you need to do an approach on the median side, posteromedial aspect, and do a thorough dissection up to the level of the capsule. So that is the only structure which is at risk. Specifically, if you are flipping the portal, so if you are using the medial portal for weighing and lateral portal for inserting the cannula, by and large, it becomes a safe approach. Still, if you want to be doubly sure, the most posterior part you can use your in all inside devices to repair the most posterior part. Otherwise, almost whole of the circumference of the meniscus you can tackle with this technique. Even the most anterior part. And the trick you have that you can do here, anterior most, is you can flip the cannula. So if you are using a 20 degree, 20 degrees old specific cannula, so you flip it on the other side. So you, what you want is you want your all the all the sutures to be exiting at one particular. So here you can see that after putting all the sutures, the meniscus is repaired in a very very strong fashion. So the strength of repair of this particular technique, this is the inside out technique, is the maximum. And therefore, it is called as a gold standard of repair. So any meniscus which is badly torn, the tissue is very bad, then this sort of tear repairs will give you the most stable repairs. If you do this kind of repair, the rate of re tears will be minimum. So supposedly, if you do the repair of this particular pattern with the all inside, you can do it. But number one, the cost of repair will be higher. And number two, the strength of repair will not be that much as we can achieve with this kind of a inside out repair because it will be a suture which is a UHFWP suture and you tie it back on the capsule so it is it has got the highest strength or highest load to failure there is very less chances that this meniscus will treat here so complications yes you can have serpentis neuroplexia in some cases you can have numbness on the medial adenomedial aspect of your leg and thereby, therefore, it is always recommended that you make a safety incision before doing this procedure. Now, the main tips are you need to do a good pie crusting, you need to have good portals, you can have multiple options of suture passes, you should have a single human double human cannula and zone specific, the angle specific cannula. And if you are struggling with portal, don't shy away to make a new portal to make your surgery simpler. In some cases, we use a specific anchors also, we will demonstrate to later, later also in that. So, in summary, you need to do a safety incision, you need to use a posterior retractor through the safety incision, you identify, if you can identify the septicus neurovascular bundle, that is perfect. The posterior horn can also be addressed well with uh, the inside out technique, but if you are if you are very, very in doubt, you can use the all inside, all inside technique for the most posterior part of the posterior horn. Thank you.